Hey guys, this is Mark. In this video, I will demonstrate how to invoke API services deployed in your backendless application using UI Builder and Codeless Logic. There is one prerequisite for this demonstration if you are going to follow uh, my instructions here in the video, and that is going to be an API service that you need to deploy in your application. This can be done in the backend section and then select business logic. I already have this API service deployed, you can do the same by clicking the plus icon, selecting codeless, then selecting this checkbox. It will give the default name and then click deploy uh, or create. I'm not exactly sure what it, I think it's going to be safe. But anyway, so once you do this, you will get exactly the same API service that is going to be part of your backendless application. This API service consists of a number of uh, methods and they need to be invoked in a specific order in order to get, to see the whole big picture and uh, it starts by invoking get instructions that provide a set of instructions in fact you can select get instructions click invoke and you'll get the instructions that demonstrate well that really describe how to use this api service then after that uh, we will be invoking the add item method and the, the, the API service, by the way, really re represents a very trivialized shopping cart. So you can add items to your cart. You can delete items. You can call get items to see what's inside of your shopping cart. And finally, there will be an invocation of the method purchase that will flush everything in your shopping cart and put all the items into the database. So all of this will be done from a UI page created with UI Builder and the codeless logic. So this is kind of a little overview of what we're going to be working with here. Back in the front end, uh, create a new page or a new page is going to be created for you. Just make sure that it's uh, it doesn't have any other logic because we just want to keep it all isolated for now. So the very first thing that we're going to do is calling get instructions. In order to do this, let's drag a button onto the page and change the button label to get instructions. And then once we get the instructions, they will be in the format of a list or collection. And that list will contain strings, each string representing a line of instructions or really a line of text. Invoking get instructions is simple. In fact, let's just add uh, the block or it's at least inspect the codeless block that will invoke get instructions. So if you go to the logic for the button, and add the on-click event. On the left-hand side, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you will see a section called API services that will contain the deployed API service. If you do not see the section or it is empty, it means you have not deployed your API service. There is a little magic here that for any API service deployed in your application, you will automatically be getting codeless blocks that represent methods and functions available in your uh, backend application. So here, since I have this service deployed, I do have this codeless shopping cart service. You click on this, and as you can see for all the methods, and we reviewed some of them, such as, uh, for instance, get instructions. There you go. So this get instructions, this block will invoke the get instructions method, but it returns something back to us. In fact, it returns a collection. So we need to display this connection collection somewhere. To display this collection, let's go back to the UI Builder interface and then add a, uh, let's see what we're going to add. We're going to add a block right here and then call this, let's give an ID to this block and it will say instructions block. Make sure to click dynamic list behavior and I will explain why. So here we have this block with dynamic list behavior and let's also add a text element to it. All right. So what's going to happen is this block, whenever it has dynamic list behavior, functions as a repeater, meaning that whenever we provide a collection of data in this, in our case, it's going to be a collection of string objects. Whenever we provide a collection of string objects to that block, it will be replicating anything that it contains inside. In our case, it contains a string block and it will be replicating it one by one for every element of the received collection to render the data from that collection. So now that we have this block, it has dynamic list behavior, you add a text, click this text and go to the logic for that text. 
And then the content logic, we basically need to instruct UI Builder of where that text is going to be getting data from. Data binding in this case is not applicable. So we have to click this add logic and then use this instructions block item data and connect it to the return. What this little block is, it's going to be an element from that array of strings that we get. And the block itself, as if you remember, I said that it's going to replicate its contents for every single element. And then every time it replicates, it will call this text uh, content logic and then will delegate to this text to obtain what is it need, needs to be displayed. And whatever this guy returns is what's going to be displayed. The net effect will look like this. Well, before we do this, let's go back to the button. So we have this. And then the result of this method, get instructions, needs to be assigned using this set dynamic list items under dynamic list. We assign like this. So what happens here? We invoke get instructions, get those instructions, and assign them as the list items to our instructions block. Before we go any further, let's see how well this works. So here's the page, click get instructions. And as you can see, we got the instructions rendered in our UI. And then this rendering happens one by one, uh, string by string, uh, replicated in our block. So, so far, so good. Next step that we need to do, in fact, the instructions here, uh, we do not need to follow them precisely, but at the very minimum, we need to invoke get instructions. We need to add item one or more. Then we need to call get items just to see what's in there. And then finally, we'll be clicking the button purchase. Uh, all right. So now let's add a divider just to visually separate the sections. And then the next section will contain uh, the functionality to add items to our shopping cart. In order to implement this, let's add a container. This container has a cell, replicate the cell. So now we have two cells. This cell will contain input fields for whatever describes an item. And these are going to be here for the label, we'll say it's going to be item name, replicate this guy, this will be item price and again replicate and this will be quantity quantity it will be a number item price is also going to be a number and finally we will have a button to add whatever you fill out here to our shopping cart so label add item and then for id add item button okay so this will be our ui and let's also replicate this divider again to select this divider and then use drag right here all right now uh, the experience is going to be such where you type in the item name price quantity click add item this will be created as an object and placed into our shopping cart. Then you can re-enter this data, click add item, and it will add second item to the shopping cart. Whenever we add item, let's take a look at the logic here. So go to logic, click on click event, and then go to our service. And you will see there's going to be a method add item. The result is not important. So let's just disable return result and connect it here. So there are a couple of parameters here. User token, we do not care about that right now. Let's keep it simple. Cart name is going to be just text. And let's call it my shopping cart. You will see that multiple methods accept cart name argument. It needs to be the same value everywhere. And this item is going to be just an object. Before we start composing this object, let's go back to the UI and then establish data binding for name, price, and quantity. Click on the logic and then go to the value logic and let's call it item name. For this one, we will call it in the value logic item price. And for the quantity, the binding in the value logic will be item 
quantity. There you go. So now, whenever you type in values into these three fields through data binding, it will end up in those properties in page data. Now, the button will need to go into page data, grab those values and compose an object that will be stored in our shopping cart. In order to do this, let's create an object and then configure the properties. So it will be name, price, and third one, quantity. And what I'm doing now is I'm just setting up the properties of our object. The values are going to be coming from page data. So for this, we will use the name that we use in data binding. It was item name for page data. Replicate this. And what I do is just select and do control command C, command V. I'm on the Mac. And if it's on Windows, it's going to be control C, control V. And uh, this will be item price. And finally, the third one. It's going to be item quantity. Now, these are the names of the properties in page data for data binding purposes. These are the name of the properties of the objects that go into the shopping cart. Remember that this name, price and quantity, because in the next step, we'll be programming, adding the logic for retrieving items from a shopping cart. So then we will be referring to name, price and quantity. Go back to user interface. This takes care of that. Let's add one more button. And then this button will say, show, show what's in the cart. All right. So when we click this button, it will retrieve whatever is in the shopping cart and it needs to be displayed somewhere. And for that, let's use again container and then replicate the cell two times. So there are three cells. We will display name here, price here, and then quantity here. And for this, let's add text component into each of them. Text here, text here, and then finally the third one right here. By the way, this may appear a little bit too tall. So what I will do is I select cell, go into dimension, and uh, change the height, just select and remove it, and repeat the same for all other ones. There you go. Now, this container, let's rename it to cart contents container, and it will also have dynamic list behavior. So it will also function as a repeater. The reason here I used block and then here is container. It really is completely up to you, whichever one you want to use. They just have different qualities about how they replicate content. So container has a row and then whenever container has dynamic list behavior, the row with all of all of its contents will get replicated for each element in the returned collection. And that collection will be returned by our invocation to get items from the shopping cart. So let's establish data binding. This will be for name. This one will be for price. And this one will be for quantity. Quantity. Okay. And now let's just add the logic of retrieving items from the shopping cart and assigning them as items for the card contents container. So select show what's in the card button, go into the logic, create the on click event. Again, we're using dynamic list, drag it out, make sure to select card contents container. And now let's add the method invocation of our API service to get card contents, get items. And then the cart name needs to be exactly the same cart name that we used in the other button. And for this, I will go to my button that is add item. And here is my cart name. Copy that. And then go to the button that I'm getting lost here. I'm just going to do it through the UI. 
this one. Oh, show card contents button. Yeah, that's why it is a really good practice just to assign IDs as you drag components out. So well, let's complete this logic and then put this card name in here. And at this point, we should be able to verify. Well, we already verified getting instructions, but we'll verify adding items to the cart and then showing what's in the cart. Let's rerun our page. Get instructions. Here they are. Now let's add item. Let's say it's going to be apples. And item price is 199, quantity 2. Add item. Now oranges price 399 quantity 4 add item now if we click show what's in the cart there you go it retrieved everything from the cart and displayed its contents so far so good one more step is going to be let's replicate this divider copy and select the divider and then drag this thing out uh, i need to scroll it a little bit right here and then let's drag another button it will be right here and put it right under the divider and then this button the label will say purchase that's id purchase button and the logic for that button will be click on click event go to your api service method purchase we do not need result, just connect it like this and uh, add the text block with the shopping cart name. I believe it was my shopping cart. Let's just verify, verify that it is indeed my shopping cart. Yes. By the way, you could have easily, uh, we could have easily added a, an input field where you would put the shopping cart name just to identify it and uh, use through data binding that value so now everything is in place let's rerun this page in the full sequence calling get instructions there you go let's add mac book pro item price let's say this getting one and uh, let's also get a keyboard item price 79 one add item click show what's in the card there you go we have these two items click purchase so now we click purchase and to see what has happened there if we go back to our application backend select data you will see that there is an order uh, table created for you automatically with everything that we have added through the UI being stored in here. As you can see, the properties of the object that we're assigning name, price and quantity, now columns in that table and all the data is in there. So the creation of this table is completely dynamic. It's going to be very important before you start, and I should have mentioned it right from the get-go, is to make sure in configuration that you have dynamic schema definition enabled. It needs to be green. Otherwise, this table will not be created. You will be experiencing and running into an error. But it is enabled by default. So if you haven't really messed with it, it should just work for you out of the box. That's it. This completes the demo of how to work with a shopping cart service using UI Builder and Codeless Logic. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching this video. And as always, happy Codeless Coding.